Hadacha, additions to Esther, 9. And upon the third day, when she had ended her prayers, she laid away her mourning garments and put on her glorious apparel. And being gloriously adorned, after she had called upon Elohim, who is the beholder and savior of all things, she took two maids with her. And upon the one she leaned, as carrying herself daintily, and the other followed, bearing up her train. And she was ruddy through the perfection of her beauty, and her countenance was cheerful and very amiable, but her heart was in anguish for fear. Then, having passed through all the doors, she stood before the king, who sat upon his royal throne and was clothed with all his robes of majesty, all glittering with gold and precious stones, and he was very dreadful. Then, lifting up his countenance that shone with majesty, he looked very fiercely upon her. And the queen fell down and was pale and fainted and bowed herself upon the head of the maid that went before her. Then Elohim changed the ruach of the king into mildness, who in a fear leaped from his throne and took her in his arms till she came to herself again and comforted her with loving words and said unto her, Echter, what is the matter? I am your brother. Be of good cheer. You shall not die, though our commandment be general. Come near. And so he held up at his golden scepter and laid it upon her neck and embraced her and said, Speak unto me. Then said she unto him, I saw you, my Lord, as an angel of Elohim, and my heart was troubled for fear of your majesty. For wonderful are you, Lord, and your countenance is full of grace. And as she was speaking, she fell down for faintness. Then the king was troubled, and all his servants comforted her. Then said the king unto her, What will you, my queen? Rather, what will you, Queen Ekter? And what is your request? It shall be given you to the half of the kingdom. And Ekter answered, If it seem good unto the king, let the king and Haman come this day unto the banquet that I have prepared for him. Then the king said, Cause Eth Haman to make haste, that he may do Eth as Ekter has said. So the king and Haman came to the banquet that Echter had prepared. And the king said unto Echter at the banquet of wine, What is your petition? And it shall be granted you. And what is your request? Even to the half of the kingdom it shall be performed. Then answered Echter and said, My petition and my request is, If I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if it please the king to grant eth my petition and to perform eth my request, let the king and Haman come to the banquet that I shall prepare for them, and I will do tomorrow as the king has said. Then went Haman forth that day, joyful and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw eth Mordechai in the king's gate, that he stood not up nor moved for him. He was full of indignation against Mordechai. Nevertheless, Haman refrained himself, and when he came home, he sent and called Eth for his friends, and Eth Zeresh, his woman. And Haman told them Eth of the glory of his riches, and the multitude of his children, and Eth all things wherein the king had promoted him, and Eth how he had advanced him above the princes and servants of the king. Haman said, moreover, Yea, Achter, the queen, did let no man come in with the king unto the banquet that she had prepared, but myself. 
and tomorrow am I invited unto her also with the king. Yet all this avails me nothing, so long as I see Mordechai, the Yadahi, sitting at the king's gate. Then said Zeresh, his woman, and all his friends unto him, Let a gallows be made of fifty cubits high, and tomorrow speak unto the king that Mordechai may be hanged thereon. Then go in merrily with the king unto the banquet. And the thing pleased Haman, and he caused the gallows to be made.